Hi everyone, I'm Hallie. Welcome to Ledger and Lace. Today, in honor of Jane Austen July, we are going to go into handwriting and dip pens. And um, I'm going to take a quote from Nick the Booksmith's Digi Kit. This is the one of the sheets, um, her quote sheet. So we're going to take a quote from there. And I'm going to do it on, she had for her patrons, um, some Jane Austen stationery. So I'm going to write it on here. I have printed this out on 32 pound HP laser printer paper. And um, everything I mentioned, I'll have a link in the description box below. So, okay, let's get started. So first up, we have feather pens. And um, <sighs> I do not like these. I mean, I know there are people who actually write with these. I am not one of them, but um, I find them very vexing. But anyway, we'll, we'll do this and then we can move on to other dip pens. So this is from Townsend's.com. They specialize in 18th century society and culture and have lots of um, accoutrements from that era. And so this is India ink. India ink is only for dip pens. You never, never, never want to use it with fountain pens, okay? Just dip pens. All right, so we shall get started. So um, I got the feather pens from Townsend's and also this um, ink well that I think Mr. Townsend makes himself. So here's the ink, and then these hold the quills. And this is a goose quill. And... Um, here we go. So let, <laughs> like I said, vexing, very, very vexing. All right, let me see if I can do reverse writing. There we go. All right, let, this is not cooperating. Let me try the other one see if that does any better. It might be the nib. Oh, there we go. Let us, us not. Okay. Is this painful for you? Because it's painful for me. Under. All right. That's enough. Under estimate. All right, we're done with that. Whoops. <laughs> Ink splat. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, I, it's a good thing I'm not trying to sell these because I would not. It would be like the opposite of selling. So let me just get my 21st century blotter and blot that ink spot. Okay. All right. So there's that. Um, and see where that's pulling. We can blot that. All right. Okay, on to the next one, which is more my jam. Okay, so I got this inkwell, not the pen. The pen is from an antique store. Um, but I got the inkwell off of Amazon, and it came with ink. And I think this is an old Estabrook, so. See, it's not my handwriting, it's the nib. So, this is a steel nib, and the advantage of that is that it lasts longer than goose quills because um, they're standardized. Let's see. What am I writing here? The power. Whoops. We call that railroading when it does that. Power of... A letter. Okay. 
Whew. All right. So there's that. Oh, before I do that, let me show you a different kind of nib. So there's not really a tremendous amount of line variation with this. Um, you can get a little, but I don't want to damage the nib. But for a pen like this with Give, this will give you line variations, kind of like um, copper plate vibe. So you just bear down a little more on the downstroke. Like so. Let us not see how now the thing about dipping pens is it slows down the writing process, but it also gives you time to sort of reflect as you're dipping your pen. Okay, so I think we get the gist. Now, you can get this kind of nib. Goulet Pens actually has one of these, this kind of nib on a fountain pen. I think it's the Duragraph. I'm not sure. I'll find out and I'll have a link down below. There we go. Okay. So that's that kind of nib. And now we're going to move to a glass pen, which this is really cool. So you'd think, well, if you were like me, you'd think, well, why'd you want to write up with a glass pen? But what's really interesting is see how this, um, these grooves are in here that actually holds the ink and you have a greater ink capacity with this with this pen. So I'm gonna use this ink that I made out of inkjet printer ink. Again, link below. Um, but you'll see, see it holds it holds the ink in these channels. So then Now, I haven't even turned the pen, but that's what you do, is you can turn it so that the ink, you know, if you run out of ink before you dip it again. But how cool is that? That I mean, it, it's smooth, too. It feels like, you know, it feels like almost like a fountain pen, which is really cool. So I'm going to rinse that off now. And we'll move on to the next one, which is... A different kind of nib. Okay, so I'm going to show you my feud nib, and I'll I'll write that down for you. F U D E. Now this I use a lot to um, address letters, but I'll show you. You don't get as much line variation as you do with the other one, but it's still very pleasing to the eye. And by the way, I'm doing um, italic lettering. Underestimate the power of a well. Letter. 
So that's the feud nib. The feud nib. So there you go. So that's that. Um, all right. So those are the nibs. Those are the, um, oh, let me just say, oh, no, there's one more. I forgot. Okay. So see this right here? This is the feed, and this is what sort of holds the um, the ink as it flows down. Here's the ink in the cartridge, and really what a fountain pen is a, is a kind of controlled leak is essentially what you're doing. So let me go back to this other dip pen that I forgot because it's sort of like in between the fountain pen and um, the regular dip pen. This is Bakelite and it's from the late 30s, early 40s because it's got a sort of deco, art deco vibe to it. Um, and here's the ink jar um, and it flips over and fills the well and then here's the ink in here and then here's the pen but you can see that the dip pen is very much like a fountain pen see it's got the feed and it's got the same sort of thing it's just that it's a dip pen so And I'm kind of writing a little fast, but you get the idea. And the thing too about nibs is the nib size is going to determine how large you write. Because, um, you know, if I try to write really small, I'm gonna have really fat letters. Let us see. Um, and you don't want that, um, or maybe you do. Um, anyway, so that's that pen right there. And so now, once once we're finished writing our letter, then we want to fold it. Um, now, Nick's stationery comes with this beautiful envelope and um, I made uh, tiny ones to make paper clips or like ta you know tabs but um, they didn't have envelopes back in the day so what we're gonna do is I also printed it out onto um, this is parchment paper and so what they did was they fold it. There's lots of different ways to do this. Okay. They had like secret letter locking and I mean, it's pretty cool. But anyway, so the letter itself was actually, you know, the envelope. So a lot of times they would just fit it in like that. I just go like that because it's a little easier to tuck in. It's a little easier to tuck in. Okay, there we go. And then you put a wax seal on it and call it a day. Oh wait, and then you address it, you address it. Okay, and and then then there you are, there's your letter. So, okay, um, I will see you in the next video, celebrating Jane Austen July. Bye.